Hey guys, uh, this is the first video for topic two on combining atoms. To just give you a bit of background, we know that there are various different types of atoms that exist, about 118 different types, and we know that these atoms can actually combine to form an, pretty much an, an unlimited uh, variety of different types of materials or substances, and each one of them have their own unique properties. So in this topic, we're going, going to understand how different types of bonding can actually form. And we're going to use different models of bonding to better understand the chemistry behind different uh, macroscopical physical properties that we can observe for those materials. This is going to lead into us talking today about subtopic 2.1 on types of materials. And also I will take certain aspects of 2.2 bonding between atoms. These are our learning objectives for this video. So you can see that this links into aspects of 2.1 and 2.2. These are your science understandings. And again, you can see that this links into both of those subtopics. So we are just going to spend some time and go through each of these together. The structure and bonding of a material helps determine the various physical properties that we can see in a material. The two words, structure and bonding, mean completely different things. So it's important that you don't get the two uh, mixed up. Firstly, the word structure refers to how particular particles, that can uh, mean atoms, ions or molecules, how they are organised within the material itself. And we'll look at various different structures that we can form. The second word, bonding, it refers to a force of attraction that holds particles together. So bonding is about something that holds uh, atoms or particles together. Structure is about how those particles are actually arranged in three-dimensional space. So coming back to structure, we can look at the different types of structure that different elements and compounds can take up. And it can fall under one of these three categories. They can be monatomic, they can exist as molecules or lattices. Let's have a look at this in more detail. Starting off with monatomic, so this does only apply to elements and we can talk about this in class as to why. The word monatomic refers to one atom, so mon or mono meaning one and atomic referring to atom. And another thing that we can find is that only the group eight elements seem to exist as monatomic elements or monatomic atoms. So we've got here helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon and radon atoms. These would all be monatomic. The second structure is uh, molecules. And so molecules you have to think of as discrete units and discrete means separate to one another. They are clusters as well. So clusters meaning groups of two or more different atoms or even the same atoms that can be com uh, combined chemically in a fixed quantity. So we have both elements and compounds that can exist as molecules. The first example we've got here is oxygen, O2, and what we can see is that it is consisted of two oxygen atoms uh, chemically bonded together. And you can see here, each oxygen molecule is separate to one another, so it's discrete, and they all contain two oxygen atoms. We can look at also compounds, so we would all be familiar with water, H2O, and what we can see here, just ignore the colour coding, but we can see that we've got two small hydrogen atoms bonded to one larger oxygen atom, and they form this particular shape. So any water molecule looks the same, and it contains the same number and type of atoms. So that helps explain that fixed quantity. Lattices, on the other hand, they represent a regular repeating arrangement of different particles and normally we're talking about atoms or ions. What we can say is that they are chemically bonded in a fixed ratio. So this is different to molecules because they don't have a fixed quantity. Essentially if you have a greater mass of your lattice substance then it means that you've got a greater quantity of those atoms or ions. But what doesn't change is that ratio of those atoms or ions that are present. So a compound that you're familiar with, uh, also known as table salt, is sodium chloride or NaCl. And what we can see here is that in a sample of sodium chloride, 
you end up with the same ratio of sodium to chlorine ions, what we should really call sodium to chloride ions. And we can see here that for every one sodium ion, which is the smaller one here, there is one chloride ion, which is the bigger one there. What this doesn't actually explain is the exact number of these particular ions that are present. And effectively, if we have a bigger sample, then we have a greater number or a greater quantity of these ions that are present. So those are the three different structures that substances can take up. And this will help influence what some of their physical properties are. We can also see another example, but in this case we have elements. And these particular um, lattice substances are made up of only carbon atoms. We know that carbon can take up various forms. So one is diamond, and you can see the structure here, how the atoms are actually bonded to one another, and how that differs to another form of carbon called graphite, where you've got these kind of hexagonal structures, and it forms single sheet layers. And these single sheet layers are just weakly held uh, together. So now if we would talk about bonding, now keep in mind bonding is a force of attraction that can exist between atoms or ions. Bonding occurs because atoms want to try and achieve stable electron configurations, what we can also refer to as stable valence shell configurations. And this can happen in one of three ways. Atoms can either lose electrons to become stable, they can gain, or they can even share electrons. And we'll look at how this can actually occur in a, a later video. If we just break up bonding into two broad categories, we can talk about bonding in terms of intramolecular bonding as well as intermolecular. Intramolecular bonding refers to forces of attraction that can occur within a molecule or a lattice. Another term that we use for intramolecular bonding is also primary bonding. So it's the main type of bonding that can exist uh, between atoms or other smaller particles. Intermolecular forces, however, refer to the forces of attraction between molecules. And the prefix inter means between, like international, meaning between nations. This is also referred to as secondary bonding or secondary interactions. And interactions is meant to represent something weaker. Keep in mind that intermolecular bonding or intermolecular attractions do not exist between lattice structures. Okay, so they only contain primary bonding, and we'll see that in a moment. Looking in a bit more detail, so intramolecular bonding, uh, what we can see is that there are patterns that can exist between the type of bonding that exists and the types of atoms that are involved. And we can summarize that in this section here. If we look at the three main types of bonding, we have metallic, ionic, and covalent. If we look at metallic bonding, this only occurs between metals, which makes sense. If we look at ionic bonding, then what we will notice is that this occurs between metals and non-metals. So if you're given the formula of a particular substance, if you can find that there are metals and non-metals that exist within it, then you can bet that ionic bonding would exist between those particular particles. Covalent bonding only exists between non-metal atoms. So again, if you get given the formula, uh, you might see that it's only made up of non-metal atoms, and in that case, it would exhibit covalent bonding. We can also divide covalent bonding into two different types, but this is because it can give rise to different, two different structures. But we'll talk about this in a bit more detail later.